Welcome back to Bambinos. We are so excited and so happy that you are able to join us once again for this week's episode. This week, we have started our new season. And this season, we are exploring about our faith, our Catholic faith. So Bambinos, before we get started, we must go and learn what it means to be Catholic. We heard this word so many times. The word Catholic means universal. But what does it actually mean to be Catholic? Hopefully, this episode is going to teach you just that. So before we get started, Bambinos, we must go and learn our Bible words. Let's get up on our feet and let's do this together, Bambinos. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn our Bible words. Good evening, my dear Bambinos. Hope you are all keeping fine. This episode of Bambino, we are studying what is a Catholic Church. You and me, we all belong to the Catholic Church which is established by Jesus Christ himself. My dear children, wherever you go, be proud of being a Catholic because it is a gift given to us. Catholic Church is established by Jesus Christ himself. So we are all part of one family. Wherever we are going, we are supposed to proclaim the Word of God. My dear children, in today's episode, we are studying a new Bible word which tells us that Jesus Christ established the Holy Catholic Church. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and that gates of hate will not prevail against it. So my dear Bambinos, please learn this Bible word and be proud of being a Catholic. Bambinos, in our Bible words, we learned about our very first Holy Pope. What was his name? What was that? Well done! St. Peter, of course. So, Bambinos, to be Catholic, I already said it meant universal. So, no matter who you are, where you are, in this big universe, to be a Catholic means we are one, united. We are the same no matter where we go. Bambinos, to be a Catholic, it means we have a beautiful mix of tradition as well as the Holy Bible. These two aspects combined, we become Catholics. So in our story, Joan is going to be telling us the importance of these two aspects. Let's go and learn.
Hi Bambinos, I hope you've enjoyed all these episodes so far and welcome to season four. In this episode, episode one, we are going to be starting off at the very core of it. We are going to be talking about the traditions and the Holy Bible because I know it's been three seasons and you're like, come on, how much more can we discover about our faith? But this is not even like 5%. We have so much more to discover about our faith and we're going to go on this journey together where we're going to discover how much God has in store for us because even though like for example, I'm 25 and so much has happened in my 25 years, but our Catholic faith is over 2000 years old and my God is billions and billions of billions of years old. I think he's the oldest being. I know he's the oldest being. So we're going to start off at the core because we're going to be talking about the traditions and the Holy Bible because that is actually what makes us different from other Christian denominations. Let's start from the very beginning. So 2000 years ago, well, 2021 years ago, Jesus spoke to Simon, his disciple, and said, Peter, on this rock, I will build my church. And that was it. That is how Christianity bloomed and a Pope was appointed head of the church because he is the head of the Catholic Church. And so it goes Pope, Cardinals, Bishops, Priests, Nuns, Deacons and lay people who all are called to evangelize and hold the gospel truth because Jesus appointed us. He gave us all a mission and he said, that this is the gospel truth and now I want you to hand it over generation to generation from your children to children to children because the word tradition itself means to hand over. You see, when I was young, my dad or mum, whoever saw the clock at the right time, would gather all of us at 7.30 and we would all pray the rosary and then we would pray some psalms and we would pray the divine mercy. And I remember actually my mum used to try and teach us new psalms every week and it would always be a competition between me and my brother to try and learn the psalm by the end of the week. And these traditions as we gather together as a family make us Catholics because the beauty of our faith is that we have such a rich history that brings us and unites us all together. We have great saints that people have devotions to. For example, if you are in your studies and you've got some exams, I know that when I used to have exams, I used to pray to Saint Joseph of Curpatino because he is the patron saint of studies. Some people who can't find things and just keep losing things, I definitely pray to Saint Anthony of Padua. And so there are different devotions that people have. So the different people have different devotions to certain saints, depending on, um, you know, what they're going through. And it is a way for the saints to intercede for us and help us out in our time of need. Just like Mother Mary helps us and intercedes for us when we need help from her son, Jesus. And you know what happens is that Mother Mary intercedes in front of her son and says, look, my child, my daughter, my son needs your help, Jesus. You have to help them out. And that is also a standalone difference that is between Catholics and Christians. Because imagine if you're going for, I don't know, a talent show, if you're going for a certain event and you take your mother along, and your friends start making fun of her. Now, it would kind of make you feel a little bit sad inside, or you'd kind of think, why? Because this is the lady that has brought me up and taught me to live in this world today. But 
Rather, if you went to these parties or you went to these occasions and your friends actually respected your mother and acknowledged her as a woman who has made you into the person that you are today, you'd feel slightly proud, you feel slightly happy inside and joyful inside. And so, as Catholics, we also acknowledge that Mother Mary is the mother of Jesus Christ and we, we adore her and acknowledge her and pray to her. And what she does, she takes our prayers and presents it in front of her son. And in that way, we're able to have communication with Jesus. We're able to have more of a closer relationship with him. And so, traditions. Traditions are vast in our faith. We have the rosary, we have divine mercies, we have devotion to saints, we have the seven sacraments, and all of them are so different, but so unique and so beautiful in the way that they are. For example, we have the institution of the Eucharist where we are able to receive Jesus within us and he is able to dwell within us. We have baptism where we are able to uh, experience the living water being bathed in the Holy Spirit. That's normally done when we're children, like a few months, months after we're born or even adults who choose to convert and become Catholics have baptism, where this happens to them. And there are so many different... Our Catholic faith is a rich treasure of history and it's beautifully put together to experience what we are today. Even for example, this whole year is dedicated to Saint Joseph. And I don't know if you attend all the live adorations and services that we have daily at Divine, but we always say the prayers dedicated to Saint Joseph every single day to acknowledge that he is our helper and our support during this time. And even later in this episode, we're going to hear from Emily, where she talks about how the Bible was all put together by Saint Jerome. And even in the way that the Bible was put together, it's such a beautiful thing because all these different scrolls were found and put together and it could only have been done by the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit inspired the Holy Bible to be put together, then I know and I'm sure of it that all the traditions in the Catholic Church are led and directed by the Holy Spirit. Because our Holy Spirit is our counsel and our advocate. And when we look at the Bible and the Holy Scriptures, we see how these traditions began where it first started and when they all come together and how it bloomed into this beautiful faith that we have today. And to be part of it, well, it's a beautiful thing. And I hope you partake in all the traditions of our Catholic Church because each one is unique, each one is beautiful, and each one is led by the Holy Spirit. Bambinos, now that we have listened to our story, next we are going to do some art and craft and this art and craft is so special because it's not just an art and craft but it's also a prayer interesting isn't it let's go and find out bambinos let's do this together one two three here we go bambinos let's go and do some art and welcome back to Art and Craft. This week we are exploring and learning why it is so important and why we're so lucky to be known as Catholics. Bambinos, one of the greatest gifts we have as Catholic is our Holy Pope Francis and he has given us a mighty prayer. And you know Bambinos, this prayer is so simple yet so genius and you know what bambinos wherever you go you will be reminded about this prayer because this prayer is called the five finger prayer and with our five fingers pope francis has taught us how to make a powerful prayer bambinos let's go to the art and craft section and let's learn what 
is meant by the five finger prayer. So to make your five finger prayer, all you need is your hand and you would need some colors, some decoration. So I have used some glitter, some PVA glue to stick my glitter on and you would need a marker or a pen so that you could annotate the image and also you would need some paint brushes to do some painting. So firstly, the very first step and my favorite step is to take out your hand and start painting. So since you have five different fingers, you are able to put five different colors on these fingers and of course on your palm, you could put a different color. So for this, I'm going to put yellow on my palm. And be generous with your paint. Okay. So I have my paint done. And I'm going to be painting each of my finger a different color. So you could use any colors. And remember for it to be as bright as you can. The brighter, the better it's going to be. So I'm going to be using pink on my pointy finger. I'm going to be using red on my ring finger. I'm going to be using green on my middle finger. I'm going to be using blue on my pinky. And lastly, I'll be using brown on my thumb. So now you have your five fingers. All you have to do is press down your hand on a piece of paper and try to do it as center as you can and make sure you put your fingers wide apart, okay? Down it goes and press down. And let's see how it's gonna turn out. Pretty exciting, isn't it? And let's see. Be careful. Ooh. There you go. That is my five fingers. So I'm just going to be going to wash my hand now, okay? So that is our five fingers. So are we done? Of course not. Now, what does this mean? So, Bambinos, our Holy Pope, Pope Francis, has taught us the five finger prayer. And each of these fingers means something different. And using our pen or a marker, we are going to be reminding ourselves how to make a perfect prayer. So, what does the thumb mean? So, this is number one and our thumb is for the people who we love so i have just wrote here love here so the thumb is the closest finger to our heart so we are going to start praying for all those people who are closest to you and those people who we love so that could be your friends your family or your best friends and people who you really really love so what is our second finger which is our pointy finger so it is for all those people who teach us or direct us so we're going to put teach so these are the people who teach you as well as instruct you and people who tells you what is right and what is wrong so this could be the people like your teachers, your priests, and other people who have authority. So, finger number three, your middle finger. Your middle finger 
is the longest finger, isn't it? So we are going to be praying for our leaders. So we're going to put leaders here. So Bambinos, we are people from all different parts of the world. So we must pray for all our leaders of our own country. And also, we should also pray for our Pope Francis, of course, because he is the leader of our Catholic Church. And number four, it's your ring finger. So these are the people who are weak. Did you know, Bambinos, that our ring finger is our weakest finger? So we must also pray for people who are sick, ill, who have who are weaker than us. So, so that is what we should be praying for. And lastly, is our little pinky finger. And this is, in this finger, Pope Francis teaches us to pray for ourselves. So you could put yourself, your, you could put, just put your. So it is just ourselves that we have to pray for. So Bambino, that is the five finger prayer. So we have to start with number one, your thumb, which means all the people who we love and we are closest to. Number two, we move on to pray for people who are our teachers and people who gives us directions. Number three, we pray for world leaders and people who are in a position to make rules. So people such as our government and our world leaders. Number four is our ring finger. And we have to pray for all those people who are weaker than us, people who are ill, sick, and especially nowadays, all the people who are affected by COVID-19, of course. And number five, lastly, it's our smallest finger, isn't it? And we must pray for ourselves because it is so important to pray for ourselves too, Bambinos. So this is our five finger prayer. So I'm gonna write a title, five finger prayer. So Bambino, what we could do right now is decorate it with some glitter. So I'm going to dip my finger. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush in some PVA glue. And I am going to paint it. And then we're going to put some glitter on it. And I'm going to put some glitter just on the top. And here you go, Bambinos, our five finger prayer. Bambinos, I told you it's going to be so simple, but yet so powerful, isn't it? And this is my art and craft. And this is my hand. Whenever I am gonna look at my hand, I'm gonna to remember to think and pray for all those people who I love, all those people who have taught me, and all the world leaders, the people who are weaker than us, and of course, a little final prayer for my personal intention. So Bambinos, make sure you do your own five finger prayer and send in all your work to our email address. But most importantly, make sure you do your five finger prayer 
on a daily basis. Bambinos, Pope Francis, such a smart person. With five fingers, he came up with an amazing prayer. Bambinos, next time I look at my fingers, I'm going to remember to do the five finger prayer. Now, let's go and learn about our saint. I wonder who Emily is going to talk about this time. Are you excited? Because I know I am. Bambinos, let's do this together. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's go and learn about our saint. everybody good afternoon welcome to bumpino news today we are going to have a brief investigation on the origins of our holy bible a person named saint jerome had translated the holy bible let's investigate on that report saint jerome was a latin priest a confessor a theologian and a historian he was born around 342 ad in sweden now croatia and he was born to a rich christian family it was during this time the churches were allowed to practice christianity in open spaces and have masses in churches without persecutions at his very young age jerome was sent to study a very robust liberal arts education he also had knowledge on grammar and rhetoric in rome he became a master in latin language there is something specific about jerome is that he was very obsessed with classical roman literature and he was really absorbing the latin manuscripts and at this time he gained knowledge on various languages and as a result of this he started a library for him Jerome constantly visits the tombs of apostles and martyrs. Saint Jerome was not baptized till the age of 18 and after 5 years of his baptism Jerome realized that a monastic life is really meant to him. It was because he had a dream at this time. And in that dream the Lord said to him that If you wish to be a follower of Christ you should meditate on the words of Christ particularly the scriptures It was the turning point in his life and he realized that a monastic life is far more meant to him At the age of 23 he began to learn Hebrew and Greek and at the age of 30 he was ordained as a presbyter or a priest and joined a monastic community as he is very fluent in latin language he started translating a holy bible which is written in hebrew and greek he translated it into latin language and during that time he became the secretary of pope damascus on the way of his translation of holy bible Several holy people including Saint Paul assisted him. He also wrote letters arguing details of faith and he even corresponded with several people. He said that ignorance of scriptures means ignorance of Christ. In 420 AD he died and was subsequently canonized. Saint Jerome's images was often depicted with a lion or an owl or often with a skull there is actually a story behind this one day a lion entered the monastery where jerome resided causing his fellow monks to flee but jerome recognized that the beast was seriously injured and he helped it by removing a thorn from his paw Saint Jerome's feast day was celebrated on September 30 and he is a patron saint of archaeologists 
Bible scholars, librarians, students and translators. He translated 46 books of Old Testament from Hebrew to Latin. He produced a document called Biblica Sacra Vulgate which is the basis of all the translations till 16th century. So this investigation report proves that Catholics were the one who encouraged the translations of Holy Bible from Greek and Hebrew to Latin and we deeply understand that without the knowledge of Holy Bible no one can become true Christians. Thank you Bumpinos for listening. We'll join with another saint next week. Bye bye. Saint Jerome. What a powerful person. Bumpinos, it's only because of him we have our holy book, the Holy Bible. And because of his efforts, we are able to read and learn it in English today. Bumpinos, now we are ready to do some dancing. I know I am and I hope you are too. Let's move our hands, stretch out our legs and let's get up and let's get excited for our dance section. Bambinos, do this with me. One, two, three. Here we go, Bambinos. Let's get moving. Praise the Lord, Bambinos. Wow, Bambinos, so quickly, we are on our season four and I'm so excited. Bambinos, today, our action song is one of my favorite songs. It's, our God is an awesome God. Isn't he? He is one of the best things that ever happened in my life. Without him, I don't know where I would be. And I want you also to know that our God is awesome. Our God is wonderful. Our God is the best thing that happened to me. So if he is the best thing that happened to me, you should also know that he will be the best thing to happen to you as well. But only one thing, believe in him. Believe in him, believe in the Catholic Church, the true church of Jesus. This is where all the true teachings are because Catholic Church is the one and only true church of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you are faithful and committed and always listen to the teachings of the Catholic Church, you will always be close to God and God, our Jesus, will always be close to you. Bambi knows without wasting any time, let's tell the full world that our God is awesome. Here we go, Bambi knows. When he rolls up his sleeves, the angels put in on the reds. Our God is an awesome God. There is thunder in his footsteps and lightning in his fist. Our God is an awesome God. Well, the Lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of feeding. It wasn't for the reason that he shed his blood. His return is very soon, so you better be believing that our God, our God, our God is an awesome God. Our God, our God, our God is an awesome God. Our God. Is an awesome God, He reigns From heaven above with wisdom, power and love Our God is an awesome God Our God is an awesome God, He reigns From heaven above with wisdom, power and love Our God is an awesome God And when the sky was starless in the void of the night Our God is an awesome God He spoke into the darkness and created the light Our God is an awesome God Judgment and brought the foot out of Sodom Mercy and grace He gave us at the cross I hope that you've not too quickly forgotten that Our God, our God Our God is an awesome God Our God, our God Our God is an awesome God Our God 
There's an awesome God he raised From heaven above when words Dumb power and love Our God is an awesome God Our God is an awesome God he raised From heaven above when words Dumb power and love Our God is an awesome God Bambinos, that is the end of our episode. Before we get going, we will go and receive our final blessing. Let's all stand up, bow our heads and get ready for our final blessing. My dear children, hope you all enjoyed this new episode of Bambino. Now let us all fold our hands before the Lord to pray and to receive the blessing of the Lord. Loving Jesus, we thank you, we praise you and we worship you. In a very special way, I pray for all these children who have watched this episode of Bambino. Mighty Lord, fill all of them with your Holy Spirit. Let all of them live according to the teachings of Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God bless. Thank you. Bambinos, welcome back to the quiz time. I hope you guys were all listening. I have five questions for you and each question will give you four options. Shall we begin? Question one. What is this week's Bible verse? Matthew 16, 18 Matthew 12, 8 Matthew 3, 6 Matthew 12, 3 So, the right answer is Matthew 16, 18. Babylons, did you get that right? I hope so too. Okay, question two. Who instituted the Catholic Church? Your options are Mother Mary, Peter, Jesus, Holy Spirit. So, Bambinos, the answer is, of course, it was Jesus who instituted the Catholic Church. Question 3. What were the languages used to write the Old Testament and the New Testament? Option 1. Is it English and Spanish? Option 2. Is it Latin and Hebrew? Option 3, Greek and Hebrew. Option 4, Malayalam and Konkani. And of course, the answer is Hebrew and Greek. Next question. Question 4, what are the five components of finger prayers? There's no option for this. So we need to pray for people who loves us, teaches, leads us, and the weaker ones, and of course, we need to pray for ourselves. So Bambinos, it's time for our final question. Question 5. Does the New Testament teach us everything that happened in Jesus' time? That was a tricky question, wasn't it? So it's either yes or no, right? And the answer is no. John 21, 25 specifically said it is impossible to write everything what Jesus did or taught us. This is why the Catholic Church comes in. On top of following the Bible, we also have traditions that which we pass on from generation to another. So Bambinos, that's it. That is the end of our quiz time. I hope you had a great time. 
I'll see you guys next time. Bambinos, before we get going, I must set you this week's challenge. You might have already guessed what this week's challenge is. This week's challenge is to make your own five finger prayer. So send in all your works to our email address. Bambinos, we also love to hear your testimonies, how your experience was of our Bambino program. So, if you have any experiences and how much you are enjoying our program, please send in all your video clips and your suggestions to our email address, which is divinekids at divineuk.org. So, Bambinos, if you send in your work, we will make sure we will include it at the end of our episodes. So that's it. That's everything from our end, Bambinos. And make sure that you look out for your work at the Bambino Treasures and enjoy some bloopers. See you guys next time. Bye. Bambino program is the Bambino program is very very inspiring, teaching us so many things like the Bible stories, the craft, the facts about saints and many more, which increases our knowledge and helps us to come more closer to God. I never fail to watch the Bambino program. I just love it. Thank you for the Joseph and the entire Bambino team.
Let's go, Bambino!